welcome to the Purity for Life podcast, helping men and women live with sexual integrity through Jesus Christ. For more information on this podcast and other great resources, visit purityforlife.me. Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to the Purity for Life podcast, episode 117. My name is Frank Honus, and I'm so glad that you can uh, be checking out this podcast this weekend. The Purity for Life podcast exists to help men and women live with sexual integrity and sexual purity for their lives through Jesus Christ. And I'm um, just so excited that I get to have the opportunity and have the privilege and have the honor to uh, you know, record a a real homegrown kind of, uh, you know, podcast, video and audio each week, uh, for the most part. Um, and amazingly, you know, this, uh, this little podcast gets views and people listen. And, um, so I, as I've said many, many times before, I would do this podcast, even if I were the only one watching and listening, <laughs> um, this is just a great little digest for me, but, um, even if there were one person, um, I would do this because it just it's my heart and um, just I'm just so blessed that I get to be able to uh, to share uh, share my heart and and talk about issues of sexual purity and uh, really talk about porn addiction, talk about lust and fantasy and and when what these things actually do to people. Um, pornography addiction is destroying lives, and so it, it's really time that we. Um, as we as it has been going on in the in past several years, where individuals and ministries and organizations are making awareness of this issue because of the way that it's destroying lives, and so I want to join that fight. I want to you know join that battle. And that's been my kind of my purpose in the last you know two two and a half years since I've been doing this podcast is just to to really try to to affect and make some change and and help people out. So. Um, this week on the podcast, I want to speak to the pastor. I want to speak to you if you're a pastor out there. Um, if if you uh, you know are the, are the lead pastor or you know a music pastor or a youth pastor, if you hold a pastoral position of any kind, this this week is for you. This podcast is for you because I want to uh, share uh, some tips. Actually, I want to share five tips this week for helping the porn addicted pastor. Um, five tips for helping the porn addicted pastor. I wish I had these tips when I was a pastor. Um, as, a, as a former pastor, I know the way that this, uh, this struggle goes. I know the depth and the difficulty and the bondage that porn addiction brings uh, because, of, for, because of 13 years of, of being addicted. And, you know, four of those years being a pastor, being a youth pastor, I struggled greatly and struggled in the dark. No one, for the most part, no one knew of my problem. No one knew of my issue. And I just continued, you know, spinning my wheels, doing ministry and, and um, you know, pretending that things were, were going well. And uh, surely God, you know, worked through those things and God did some really amazing things through you know, my, you know, unfaithfulness and, and impurity, but because God's sovereign in that way. Uh, be, but I know that it, I diminished my life so greatly because of my addiction. And so uh, this is really an area that, that my heart really breaks for. Uh, my heart breaks and it aches for pastors who are struggling with, with pornography and have porn addictions. And, um, and so I want to, I want to jump into this. I want to talk about um, you know, share some tips that are are ones that that I share a lot on this podcast, but but specifically for you as a pastor, uh, some things to think about to help you find freedom from this addiction, and to help you understand that you don't have to live like this. You don't have to live two lives: the one up on the uh, you know behind the pulpit, and the one you know at night locked in your office or you know uh, in your den or wherever uh, next to your computer you know, looking at pornography. Um, you know, I believe that, I believe that pastors are, you know, majorly targeted for this kind of addiction. 
um, even more so than I think any you know other substances. I think pastors are an audience and a group of people that that uh, you know porn really targets in many ways because of their profession. Because many pastors are very isolated, um, many pastors don't have. Uh, close friends, uh, people that that they that they share their lives with. There's an intense pressure in ministry and stress uh, to perform and to gain numbers and to preach great sermons and to be that guy who people look to. And I think a lot of pastors live under that anxiety and they live under that pressure. And I think there's there, there's so many reasons why I think pastors struggle. I, I certainly remember my reasons why I struggled, but you know whether it's stress or anxiety or loneliness or uh, you know this emptiness that that you feel, it can be uh, incredibly incredibly daunting and, and challenging to to be walking through this. And so I have a couple statistics I actually want to read. Um, I found a pretty great article here. I'll reference, um, and, and this article actually comes from xpastors.com. And the title of the article is How Many Pastors Are Addicted to Porn? The stats are surprising. Check this out. This is pretty wild. 51% of pastors say pornography is a possible temptation. Nearly 20% of the calls received on focus on the family's pastoral care line are help are for help with issues such as pornography and compulsive sexual behavior. And of the 1,351 pastors that Rick Warren's website, pastors.com, surveyed on porn use, 54% said they had viewed internet pornography within the last year, and 30% of those had visited within the last 30 days. Patrick Means, author of uh, Men's Secret Wars, reveals that 63% of pastors surveyed confirmed that they are struggling with sexual addiction or sexual compulsive compulsion compulsion, including, but not limited to, the use of pornography, compulsive masturbation, or other secret sexual activity. 75% of pastors did not make themselves accountable to anyone for their internet use. And so the, you know, the statistics, the numbers just go on and on and on of, of how, many, how many pastors struggle and the depth of this addiction. And so it is, it is, it is way past time that that we help our pastors, that we support our pastors, that we come alongside of them. And I want to, you know, I really want to give this disclaimer out because I think it's so important that the pastors are people too. They can struggle just like anyone else can. Um, and, and so I think we need to, to kind of back off this position that, you know, pastors are like, you know, supermen, you know, superman and superwoman. That's not the case. Pastors are people too. They have the same blood blood running through them that you do, and they struggle. They have all sorts of, of, of pressures on them, and but but certainly uh, as a pastor, you need to take ownership and responsibility of your decisions. I'm not giving you a pass here. I just want you to understand if you're not a, a leader, a ministry leader, or a pastor, and and you look to your pastor to be everything to you, believe me, they they, they won't be, and they can't be. And they struggle in the very same ways that you do, and so let's you know let's just kind of offer, let's just kind of remember our pastors, give them a little bit of grace in this area because it is such a a, a low it can be a very lonely, isolated area of work and ministry, um, and 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 there's just there's lots and lots of guys who struggle, lots of men who struggle, and and and, and women who struggle as well, and so I want to share with you a few tips to, uh, this weekend. Uh, on on some some tips for pastors to think about again some of these things we've mentioned before but but I you know they they're worth bringing up again number one and this is the the most major one pastors you need to come clean bottom line you have to come clean you need to share openly and honestly with your wife your spouse uh, your board your church board. Uh, your leadership, whoever is in your kind of your circle of of influence, your circle of of uh, you know within your uh, ministry uh, leadership positions, you know, uh, however that's kind of broken down, whatever structure that is in your church, you need to tell them about your struggle. I wish that that when I was a pastor, that I had people to go to. Um, and, and, and I know, and this is the hard thing. I know this is the hardest thing for so many pastors is they're afraid they're going to lose their job. 
They're afraid they're going to lose their position. And for many churches, that is the case. Unfortunately, I think that a lot of pastors are just fired on the spot. Now, again, disclaimer, I do believe that if you are a pastor and that you are struggling in this area, that you are, you know, that, that you, you can't stop looking at porn, you keep going back to this stuff day after day, week after week, that, that you're not healthy. And that ministry right now is not the place that you need to be in. It's not the the healthiest place for you at all. You need you need a season of of leave. You need a season of healing. You need a time where you are out of the of the spotlight and the limelight. And you need to get healed up. You need to walk through a, a process of recovery and restoration. And so, believe me when I say that, that's what you need. But so many times. Pastors and or churches rather are so quick to just you know nail put that final nail in the coffin in their in their pastor and just fire them on the spot and and not really even offer them any kind of help whatsoever and, and there's really a reason behind that because so many churches are so ill equipped for this kind of struggle and they have no idea what to do <laughs> and so but but that still does not negate your responsibility pastor to come clean and to be open and to be honest. That is the beginning of your freedom. That's the beginning of your healing. It's a hard thing to do. It takes courage to do that. But it will be the the best decision. You'll never regret that decision to come clean. Number two, don't be ashamed to seek out a counselor. Don't be ashamed to seek out a counselor. Um, You know, I know this was a, a, um, at first this was a difficult thing for me to do. Um, at before I got my story out there, before I shared my story, it was difficult to, you know, find a counselor and to get the help that I needed. But you need to find someone that you can talk to, someone who's professionally, you know, who, who's who's qualified in this area, even maybe even maybe even certified in sexual addiction therapy, to walk with you through your struggles, to help you understand and discover, you know, what's going on below the surface. What, what are the things that are driving me to look at porn? What are the places of pain in my life? You need someone to walk with you, someone who's specialized, someone who is, you know, I, I believe Christ-centered and is certified in this area. I think those are the two most important things that they're, it's a biblically-based counseling ministry, and it is a person who is certified in sexual addiction ther- therapy. So don't be ashamed to do that. You're not a bad person. You're not weird, and there's nothing wrong with you. You are just not healthy. You're sick. There's a place in your life that's that's open and, and wounded and and you need to, to find some healing and, and and a counselor is specifically there's so many great ones out there uh, and, and you need to find that for your life. Um, number three, put some software on your computer on all your computers and all the computers and devices that you have access to. Um, this is this is so important, and I find that that many many pastors don't do this. They don't take the step and the time to do this, and yet they continually fall and fall and fall and fall. You have got to protect yourself, and that begins with covering yourself and being wise about the sources that you use. Whether it's your computer that you're struggling with, you need to put software on it. If it's your tablet, your smartphone, I would put I would put software on all of those devices. Put some kind of of, of uh, an accountability and filtering software, Covenant Eyes, X3 Watch, you know, Safe Eyes, whatever you need to get on there, get it on there. On your TV, you need to put some kind of, if there's a filter or, a, or block the channels that are struggles to you, or just get rid of cable altogether. You know, who needs it? Um, you need to think about the specific areas that you are, are prone to slip and, and, and are, are great, great sources of temptation to you. The areas that you're you're basically find yourself looking at porn from, you need to cut those areas of out of your life. I mean, that needs to be a, an immediate uh, one of your immediate first steps that you take um, in this in this journey here. Uh, number four, you need to be accountable to at least a couple people throughout the week. Um, and this is hard because again, a lot of pastors don't have friends in their lives. They don't have people, health, self, safe, healthy people in their lives that they can talk to. And this is such a shame. I know that I didn't. And a lot of that was my choice. Of course, I chose not to, to reach out. I chose not to, to incorporate people in my life, but, but you need to try to find safe, healthy people. 
and perhaps even your counselor can help you do that. They can kind of link you up with, you know, some people that that are healthy. Maybe there is a a pastoral counseling kind of, you know, uh, a ministry in your church that can kind of help you that. Maybe there are some people on your board that will be safe, healthy people for you. Uh, but believe me here, communication is is the key here throughout your week because you're going to be feeling, you're going to be feeling triggers. You're going to be feeling those temptations come up. You're going to be feeling those times where you are greatly stressed and you are wanting to act out. You are wanting that fix. And in that moment, in that time, and not just in that moment, in that time, but even the moments you're, you're feeling good, you need to be able to pick up that phone or you know text that person or email, but, but really, or phone or meet them face to face and tell them how you're doing. And that needs to happen on a at least a, a weekly basis. Uh, certainly, probably even you know reaching out to somebody on a daily basis is not a bad thing for you, especially initially coming out of this addiction. And then number five, the last tip um, I do I want to share is that is that you should really you know try to find if you can take it take it to another level and find a support group. Find you know uh, a, a group of of people. What if I mean? What if you could even find a group of, of, of pastors that struggle the same way you do? There is a uh, there's a pastor support group on x3groups.com. If you go to x3groups.com, this is a ministry of, of Triple X Church. Um, uh, I actually lead an online group for men, but one of the groups on there is for pastors who struggle. Is for for you know men in leadership who struggle with porn, and it's for pastors only. And I think that's a you know I think that's a good thing. I think pastors need to be able to know other pastors that are struggling the same way they are, and and feel the same demands, and 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 can kind of relate to that same kind of thing that they're walking through, and uh, you know the kind of profession that they have. Uh, it's a great thing. So check that out. That's a great uh, little uh, resource tip you can go to. That's x3groups.com. And there are, uh, I believe it's at least one or two groups on there specifically for pastors. So, you know, just kind of some final thoughts here. You know, your ultimate goal is to, in this whole process, in this whole process, pastor, your ultimate goal is to dig deep down to find out what is really driving the addiction. What is really pulling you towards this stuff? And for you, you're going to probably, just like anybody else, you're going to need to go, you're going to need to press the rewind button in your life and go way back. What are, what, what was your, if you can even think, what is your very first memory of exposing yourself uh, or, or being exposed to something sexual? Now, that's a major, major question. Think about that. You know, maybe that gives you a little bit of a, a um, you know, catalyst as to see where did it start? Where did, where did this struggle really begin in my life? How did it begin? And then how did it kind of manifest? And then how did it kind of grow throughout my life? What are the sources of pain? Uh, what sources of pain do you have in your life? Um, you, you're going to have to dig down to understand the why behind your addiction, not just the how tos on on stopping. Those are very important. Believe me, I love the practical stuff. You know, my friend Jeff Fisher does an incredible job of of of, of you know uh, giving so much material out on the practical on how to, you know, how to do this, tips on how to do this, tips on, and, and he's so great in that. Um, and 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 I feel like I kind of come into play in this where we. we Try to figure out the why. We have to dig down deep and and peel back the onion layers, and understand why. Because until you understand why you struggle, it doesn't matter how many how tos you have. You can modify your behavior all you want, but if you don't understand what's behind your struggle, what's underneath that struggle, what's in your heart, what's in your mind, then you will continue to to come back to that place, and your these these wounds and these oh this you know this void will still be left open in your life and so um i i, I just my final thought tonight is is really my final thought this weekend rather is that one of my and i hate to to kind of share this near the end but but one of my fears my major fears about pastors um specifically those who struggle with with porn addiction with pornography or whatever it is sexual addiction of some kind is that they're too afraid to take the steps necessary to find freedom because of what people will think of them. I mean, is that you? 
if you're watching this and you're a pastor, if you're listening to this, are you afraid? Are you too afraid of what people will think of you if you come out of this addiction and you make this, if you make this known and you make, you take these steps towards freedom? Um, those who I've kind of and I've you know and I've met some men pastors who are just very they just are so afraid of what people will think of of them as an individual that they struggle with this kind of stuff as if they are some kind of superhuman. <laughs> and my and my retort to that, my response to that is that who cares what people think? Who cares what people think? You know, the reality is that they you know people in your congregation are struggling with this. People in your men, every single, every other men, literally statistically, every other guy in your church is dealing with this addiction. Over 50% of men. So for you to be able to come out and step out of the darkness and set that example, how powerful might that be to spark something within your church? You know, this, 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 this idea of, of being open and honest and seeking out sexual integrity and sexual purity for your life. Maybe that needs to happen. And, and if you are struggling, that is, that is what needs to happen in your life. But I hope you'll take these tips to heart, and I hope you will truthfully, honestly come to a place where you are able to come clean, that you're able to you know, find the freedom that you so long for, that, that you would you know, find a counselor and, and put software on your computers, your devices, to, you know, that you'd be accountable, find a support group that you would take the steps necessary to to find sexual integrity. So again, I hope that you have a great week and please know that you can contact me throughout the week at any time uh, by visiting our website purity for purityforlife.me. Almost said living purityforlife.me is the website and there's many links on there that you can contact me uh, through social media or just email me. My email's frankhonus at me.com. I uh, would love for you to to check out uh, for, for you know to touch base with me if you have any questions or you just need some extra support and you need a listening ear or you need some kind of some feedback um, or, or whatever it might be um, if you have comments or feedback or suggestions for this podcast or the website please please contact me purityforlife.me is is the name of the website uh, lots of great resources and articles and all kinds of stuff on there so hope that you guys have a great great week pastors I'm praying for you, and, and and again, my heart breaks for you, and and it's again, it's because I was a pastor at one point. I'm a former pastor, uh, and I know what it was like to struggle. I know what it was like. I understand uh, what it was like to be in the place that you're at, and but I know that you can be free, and I encourage you to find that freedom, to take those steps out, and they're hard. They're hard steps to take, but I know you can do it. And if you need some extra help, would love for you to contact me. Again, my email is frankhonus at me.com. Check out purityforlife.me uh, for all kinds of resources there. Have a great week, and I'm wishing you a pure life. Thanks for checking out the Purity for Life podcast. God bless. Mm-hmm.